Hello everyone and Merry Christmas. It is that time of year again. Christmas can be overwhelming, especially when it seems you need an entire set of vocabulary just to get through the holiday season. In this English lesson for beginners, we will be exploring the most popular Christmas treats that are on offer at this holiday time. Whether it is something sweet, a tasty morsel, or a cheeky tipple, I have the ultimate word list of Christmas treats for you. Who knows, maybe you might even pick up some ideas for Christmas along the way. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel, Learning English Pro, you're very welcome. My name is Jer and I'm narrating your Christmas English lesson today. Make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all my latest vocabulary videos. And if you're looking for even more Christmas vocabulary, there's no better place than my channel, Learning English Pro, where you can find an entire playlist dedicated to the subject. Without further ado, let's check out our first Christmas treat, which is hot chocolate. You may also hear it called hot cocoa or drinking chocolate. I don't know about you, but I love a hot chocolate. But what exactly goes into one? Let's check out the ingredients. So, of course, there's chocolate. It can be shaved, melted or in powder form. Then hot milk or water is added along with sweetener. Toppings include whipped cream and marshmallows. Did you know that hot chocolate is an ancient drink? It originated two and a half to three thousand years ago with the Maya people in the Americas. Next up, we are heading to the UK for mince pies. These can also be found in the United States where they're called a mince meat pie or in Australia or New Zealand, they can be called a fruit mince pie. The original recipe for mince pies comes from the 13th century and it included meats, fruit and spices. However, modern recipes have eliminated the meats altogether and we're just left with the pies filled with fruit and spices. So there's no meat in these pies. However, there are animal products in it. It contains suet, which is an animal fat. It's time to move on to our next Christmas treat. And to be honest, it's really my favorite, a cheese board. It can also be known as a cheese course. So with the cheese board, you usually get a selection of cheeses on a wooden board or plate. Generally, it's served towards the end of a meal. Sometimes it can be served instead of dessert or at other times it can be served before or after dessert. It is served with crackers, bread, fruit and sauces like relish. Our next Christmas treat is not one you can eat or drink, but it is one that gives plenty of fun. Christmas crackers. These are a Christmas decoration for the dinner table. So what do they do? They are pulled open in a contest between two people. The winner is the person who claims the biggest part of the split cracker and it makes a cracking sound when split apart. And they usually contain a small prize inside along with a paper hat and a joke. They are popular in Ireland, the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and South Africa. And in Commonwealth countries, they are known as bonbons. Let's roll on to our next Christmas treat, which is a Christmas classic, gingerbread. This is a type of baked good, which is typically flavored with ginger, cloves, nutmeg and cinnamon and sweetened with honey, sugar or molasses. And like many of the Christmas treats on offer, gingerbread can be traced back to ancient times like ancient Egypt and ancient Greece. It is often used as a decoration and it's usually made into shapes like houses or little people. These little people are known as gingerbread men. Have you ever eaten a gingerbread man? Let me know in the comments below. Our next Christmas treat is another one which is associated with the UK, a Christmas pudding. In American English, it is often called a plum pudding. And while sometimes called a plum pudding, it actually doesn't contain any. 
And why is this? Well, the recipe originates from Victorian times when the main ingredient, which is raisins, were called plums. A really cool thing about Christmas puddings is that it is a tradition to set them on fire when you're serving them at a table. And this is done by adding brandy to the pudding and setting it on fire. It's really impressive. And we are staying with desserts for our next Christmas treat, which is a Christmas trifle. This is a layered dessert commonly associated with British cuisine. The term trifle comes from the 16th century. And it is made with thin layers of sponge fingers, custard, jelly and fruits. Alcohol is commonly added to the recipe. The sponge fingers are usually soaked in an alcohol such as sherry or a fortified wine. Let's move on to our next Christmas treat which is another one of my favourites. Finger food. This can also be known as party food. Americans usually refer to them as canapes. There are lots of synonyms in different languages. Another one in English is a starter. No matter what you want to call it, it generally is a small dish served before a meal at a buffet or distributed at a party. They are usually small and designed to be eaten by hand. Finger food can include bread, meat, crackers, cheese, sauces, small pastries and much more. And they are usually savoury in flavour. Next up, we're going to take a look at some alcohol beverages that are popular at Christmas time. And our first one is eggnog. This is quite a strange concoction. It is an egg and milk drink with alcohol. It is traditionally made with milk, cream, sugar, whipped egg whites and egg yolks. Alcohol such as brandy, rum, whiskey or bourbon are often a key additional ingredient. Eggnog is traditionally served in Canada and the United States at Christmas. It is served chilled and flavourings such as cinnamon and nutmeg are typically added. Moving on, our next Christmas treat is mulled wine. This can also be known as spiced wine. So what goes into making mulled or spiced wine? Usually it is made with red wine along with various spices and sometimes raisins. It is served hot or warm. And it is commonly served in Christmas markets across Europe. Spiced wine or mulled wine has a low alcohol content and it can be found alcohol free in some places. We're going to finish up the lesson with a cocktail. It's called Irish coffee. Irish coffee is a cocktail consisting of hot coffee, Irish whiskey and sugar. It's stirred and topped with cream. A version of this cocktail began being served in Vienna, Italy in the mid 19th century, but it gained its current name in the 1950s. And if you drink alcohol, I hear it's worth trying. And Irish coffee brings us to the end of our English vocabulary lesson on Christmas treats. Let me know in the comments below which Christmas treat you'd be willing to try. If you're looking for more English vocabulary, you should head over to my YouTube channel, Learning English Pro. There you'll find over 150 videos which cover lots of different topics in English vocabulary. And if you can't find what you want, let me know and I'll make a vocabulary video for you. Coming up on screen are some video suggestions just for you, along with the link to subscribe to my channel. And there's also my community tab on my YouTube channel where you'll find lots of additional learning English content. That just leaves me to say I hope you have a fantastic day and remember, keep learning English like a pro.